The new water deluge system at Starbase, Texas sprang to life in a surprising and blasting manner on Monday, culminating almost three months of non-stop work by SpaceX after having excavated a crater under the launch mount during the first test flight of Starship. However, they have been working hard and fast to repair the damage, make massive improvements to the foundation underneath the OLM, and install a new water-cooled steel plate which as I mentioned has just been tested for the first time. Previously they had performed what looked like purge tests with high pressure gas, but on Monday they shot water at high pressures through this upside down shower head and while well, it did not disappoint, it's still unclear whether they let the water out at 100% of the intended water pressure that it's going to have on launch day. I do not think that was the case. And it also looked like a short test with high water pressure being maintained for about 10 to 11 seconds, I, I believe, before it began to diminish. So I imagine SpaceX will want to perform longer tests of maintained uh, high pressure in the near future. Although that being said, I just went back to watch the first uh, integrated flight test of Starship and I think it took about 8 or 9 seconds for Starship to lift off the launch mount from the moment the engines ignited. So in theory 11 seconds could be enough, especially if they bring the liftoff time down by a couple of seconds. I think Falcon 9 rockets need like 2 or 3 seconds from engine ignition until liftoff. So perhaps we'll see something along these lines with Starship in the future. But before all of that happens, this new system will have to be put to the test by Booster 9. It should look similar to what we saw in the video shared by SpaceX a while ago, where they fire a Raptor engine onto a steel plate. Although this time around, it will, it will be 33 engines and a much bigger plate with a lot more water. But also with a larger gap between engine exhaust and steel plate. Speaking of Booster 9, it it just rolled out of the Mega Bay on Tuesday morning toward the Rocket Garden. We'll see how long it stays there. Booster 10 was cryotested over at the Masses test site. The OLM came to life once again last night by activating its FireX fire suppression system and a new thrust simulator presumed to be used on Ship 27 was seen rolling toward the build site. On Tuesday morning, I woke up to some turmoil on Twitter because apparently Blue Origin wants to patent an airspike engine for both propulsion and landing of a fully reusable upper stage, likely for their new Glen rocket, which also includes an actively cooled uh, metallic heat shield. And while many rocket enthusiasts are not precisely enthusiastic about it, with many complaining that it is more or less a copy of what Stoke Space is already building, further aggravated by the fact that they are trying to patent the design, which could prompt a response from Stoke Space. And uh, the story gets even more complicated when you find out that the founders of Stoke Space also worked at Blue Origin. So I think it's a good thing to have a uh, another company working on an actively cooled metallic heat shield, but I don't see how the industry would benefit from this design being patented. And this is not the first time that Blue Origin tries to patent a design. Back in 2019, I believe they also tried to patent the very act of landing rockets on recovery ships at sea, which SpaceX had already been doing for years and surprising absolutely nobody. That one got rejected by the US Patent Trial and Appeal Board. So we'll see where this new move from Blue Origin ends up. India's Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft keeps steadily rising its orbit as it inches closer to the moon. It has already performed its third planned orbit rising burn and it will perform two more burns which will put the spacecraft on course to the moon's sphere of influence. It will then perform a series of retrograde burns to lower its lunar orbit until the day of its planned descent to the surface in the South Pole region which will be on the 23rd of August, the day before my birthday. So what a better birthday gift than uh, having the spacecraft land on the moon and uh, sent back some amazing pictures. The rover they're going to deploy has an expected lifespan of uh, 14 Earth days or one lunar day and it weighs 26 kilograms or 57 pounds here on Earth. And I thought it would be funny to calculate how much it will actually weigh on the surface of the moon, which would be about 4.3 kilograms or 9.4 pounds. A rocket Lab launched a successful 39th flight of its Electron rocket, carrying CubeSats for NASA, 
Spaceflight Laboratory and Spire, which also included the successful recovery of the first stage after it parachuted down into the ocean. And seeing these images reminded me of the shuttle boosters that also parachuted down after each launch. And it also makes me really happy seeing the success story of Rocket Lab. They are consistently carrying out successful missions and so far in 2023 they have been the second private company with the most launches after SpaceX, totaling at uh, six successful flights so far. So I hope they continue on their path of success and growth so we can have even more launches in the future and uh, more access to space. So with that I said goodbye to this short video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon again in the next one. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.